Hello everyone and welcome back. After the snowstorm that just came through when the other video ended, power was out. We lost power for 53.5 hours, so 53 and a half hours. And it finally came back on and now tomorrow morning at 3 o'clock in the morning will be seven days since we've had internet. They still haven't got the internet back on. Uh, yesterday, as you can see in the tracks in the driveway, we got about uh, another three inches of snow. But now, we have another storm coming in. This next storm now, the scary part isn't so much like the snow. We're in the six to 12 inch category. But it's gonna be very cold. Right now it's six below zero and it's 10.30 in the morning. And tonight's gonna to get down to 14 below, according to the phone. So up here it'll be closer to 19 or 20. And, but the wind are gonna be gusting up, they said like 50 miles an hour. This is the alert that Melissa sent me. So with that warning, it was time, like it's like, okay, I gotta go fill up the gas cans again. And, uh, and get ready. And then, you know, there was a couple of things that we learned on the last one, having the power out so long, which wasn't so bad because the temperature wasn't bad. But this new storm with the gonna be, I mean, the, the wind chills will be in that 40 to 50 below zero range. And in the, the mobile home trailer, Melissa has rooms in there, two rooms for the outdoor cats to go in there. And she keeps heaters in there. And when the heater, when the storm came last time, the heaters were out. So and now, and that wasn't even cold. Now it's going to be cold. So I need to get the second generator going. I couldn't get, you know, we have two in the garage. I have three generators. And I've got two in the garage. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyway, I got to go up and get gas, stop off and get some starting fluid, and just kind of get ready for this next storm in case it does come through. round that went through I think we got about 18 inches at the house but it was such a wet heavy snow and this batch now with it being so cold is going to be a light fluffy snow so it'll be much easier to move around I wish I could have a snow plow on this truck here old reliable but when I had it in getting that transmission put on it I had thought about okay we'll throw a plow on this for the winter but I told that to the mechanic that's always worked on it. He says, whatever you do, do not put a plow on this truck. They said the frame is so rusted on here, he said, you're gonna rip the truck apart. So I just use it as my daily driver and uh, drive it like it has a Band-Aid on it. That's how I drive all my vehicles though. I drive them like they have a Band-Aid on them and they last a long time. I was gonna do all of this running tomorrow in the morning, but now my schedule has changed and tomorrow from, I'll probably leave before light until 1.30 in the afternoon, I am just slammed busy. And today with it only being six below and the wind is starting to pick up and not bad, um, it's much warmer. Tomorrow's, you know, it'll be close to 20 below at the house plus the wind chill, it's gonna be really raw. I don't think it's supposed to get above zero for the next three or four days. Just picked up everything I needed from l and I got starting fluid, carburetor cleaner, two quarts of oil, and some D batteries. Now I'm gonna stop up here and get fuel. I need to fill up my truck and those cans. And if I can get that other generator to run, that would be awesome. With all this snow on, the tree is weighting it down and there was so much ice with that last storm, it's just stuck to it. When it starts really blowing, there's gonna be some broken branches. 
and that's what they're worried about if we're taking down power lines. That was brutally cold, but we're all filled up. Any of those branches break off and take down that power line, we'll be screwed again. Well, I'm going to unload that fuel, but I'm going to leave you in the truck. It's too cold. With these two generators here, this one, I started when the power was out during the last storm because I've got that battery, 2,000 watt battery bank that Zach got me. And that ran the furnaces in here for a long time, but when it started getting low, it was like, I'm going to pull this generator out. I bought this one. I talked about it in the last video, I think. Uh, probably five years ago, I, what I actually did was throwing it in the back of my truck when I would drive my black diesel up for the winter trip in case if it's 25 below and that diesel doesn't want to start because it's not plugged in, I could just take this out of the box, fire it up, um, and let it sit there for, you know, a half hour heating up the truck, the motor thing, and it would start up. But anyway, never use it. So I took it out of the box and put gas oil in it. Pull it started first pull and then it quit after about five minutes no matter what I did with this thing making sure it was level everything it would quit after sometimes a minute sometimes five minutes it might have made it to ten minutes it constantly so brought it back inside here well then I I went and I looked online about this actually what I looked up was how to unhook the oil alert and when looking that up it said that with these generators Sometimes they said you can unplug this and then let it run for half hour, 15 minutes or whatever because the sensor gets stuck to the bottom of the crankcase and then once everything is running it'll break loose. Well, when I took the oil thing out, you know, it said it had zero oil in it, but at one time they did put oil in it to test it and then they must take it out. And I'm sure that, anyway, that the little sensor got stuck in there and this just sat in a box for five years and it just got stuck. So anyway, I just unhooked it. I think the oil alert is stupid anyway. I always check the oil on them. But then now I, I had it running out there before we left and everything and I had it running for about 45 minutes and it ran absolutely fine. So this will run the shop here no problem with the furnaces or whatever. But Melissa has cat heaters in two sides of that trailer where the cats can get in, the outside cats. And... That might sound stupid to some of you, but if you are with Melissa, uh, it's like animals are higher up on the scale than humans are. She's all worried that they're going to get cold and not have a place to go because they all go in there. She feeds them, waters them. We got cats. There's one running around here now. I don't even know where that one. I've never seen it before, but it's hanging out here. So <laughs> they just come around. But this one from Louisiana that was bought when the after the flood. I don't know what flood it, you know, or a hurricane or whatever, and this thing would power the fifth wheel down there, and it did it for a long time. It's a good generator, and this is the one that we always use when the power would go out here. Well, I don't think the power went out at all last year, but the first year we were here, we had a time when I think the longest it was out was 23 hours, so we beat it this last time. And I wanted to start this to bring it back here to run the workshop, you know, because I didn't want to take that one out of the box, I couldn't get it started. So after the video was done, I I went ahead and took the, the bottom of the carburetor off, the, the bowl, you know, that's Zach's thing. He's really good at that, but it had all kind of crud in there. And I took the gas off the um, fuel filter, took it off the the side where it's already went through it and it runs just fine so it's not that it was like it would fire run and stop just like it's not getting fuel took out the spark plug perfect spark so it's just not getting 
it's in the carburetor. So anyway, I cleaned it, and then as I'm out there cleaning it, Melissa comes out, scares the crap out of me, because I'm here, and the Honda generator that ran the house, the one that Zach fixed that used to run the tent all the time, that's what we ran the whole time here. I mean, it's so fuel efficient, electric start, love it. And she comes up, <laughs> scares the crap out of me, and she goes, what's that? And I'm looking up, and I said, that's a light bulb. And um, it didn't even click in my head that the light bulb was on. The power had come back on, so I didn't need it, so I didn't work on this anymore. I pulled it like five times after I cleaned that bowl and sanded it all out, and there was all kind of scaly stuff in there. So anyway, I got starting fluid now to shoot a little in there, and we'll see if this runs, because if this runs, it will run everything back here, and I can run uh, the lights and the furnace in the guest house, because I was so bored, I couldn't get lights or power tools to work back there, so I had nothing to do but sit there and edit videos, and I got really super bored. Until it was time to finally push some snow around. I just drug this in here just before we went up and got fuel for everything. So I wanted it to kind of warm up. But yeah, this thing was always flawlessly worked until this year. It's a little hard to start sometimes, but once it starts, it, you know, you could get it on the first or second pull. See what I mean? It's doing it again. I just don't get it. I don't know. I mean, it's obviously starved for fuel, but it runs for such a long time, even with a little shot of, of starting fluid, but that was on full choke. So, holy crap, I need to air it out in here. Uh, I suppose I'll have to pull that whole carburetor off and I got carburetor cleaner, cleaner and spray in there or whatever, but that gets scary when I do that because if there's an extra part, I'm not going to know where it goes. So, And it isn't doing me any good like this, though. Melissa and I were talking, and before next year, we might get something like a Honda 6500 or 8000 watt that would just run everything. And we don't, there's no need to get one of those whole house, our neighbors have a whole house one. But the power doesn't go out that often here. It'd be nice to have it, but theirs runs on propane, and it just eats the fuel. So they're very... Uh, uh, what would be the word conservative on using it and I'd rather just put some gas in here and run it because it's not like it happens all the time I'll play around with that later I'm gonna go in and have some lunch oh it's over 24 hours later came in and have uh, lunch yesterday and then ended up going back out there and working on those generators I'll talk about that in a little bit, but now today, it's it started out at 19 below zero. Now I don't know what it is, six below, seven below, something like that. And it's been this light snow, and the roads are just horrible. I had a busy day this morning. I got back here about 2, 2.30 or 3, 
Right now it's 3.30 or so, maybe 3.40, I'm not sure. But anyway, the roads are a mess and it's just this real light snow that's coming down, these small snowflakes and it's still saying two inches, but tomorrow is when the wind picks up and it's gonna get really nasty. I guess it's 8.5 below zero still. I'm just about finished editing the, the video on the actual snowstorm. I want to get this done tonight so maybe I can upload it tomorrow in the morning, run up and do that. Good morning everybody. I'd say we got three, four inches of snow last night. And now starting this afternoon and tonight and tomorrow it's going to be all the wind that's going to blow this around. I'm driving up to Walmart right now to upload a video because not only do we have the slowest internet on the planet at the house, Ever since the last storm now, it's been eight days that the internet's been out. So it's pretty frustrating. Melissa finally called them yesterday. We keep checking online and they say, oh, it's going to be by 9 o'clock tonight. Or it's going to be within the next 12 to 24 hours. She called them yesterday. Was not in a very good mood when she did it. And uh, they said it would be on by 7 o'clock last night. And the whole area is out. <laughs> it's just ridiculous that it's taken this long, but no, we still have nothing. Almost done. 57 seconds. Well, now I'm heading home and I'm going to pick up Melissa. She's technically working from home today, but uh, there's something she can only do on the computer at her office. And since tomorrow and then Monday after the weekend is holiday here, so she's off, she wanted to get in there if she could and do a few things. So we'll see if her son Brandon wants to go also. We'll stop off somewhere and have lunch. It's getting seriously nasty out here. That doesn't look like much right now, but that wind will gust and that snow will just blow. It's cold. Melissa and I went out. I went into Superior, went out for lunch, came back home here. Now I have to go to Walmart and do a Walmart run. She just has a Walmart, like a, I just have to do a pickup. She's gonna make uh, jambalaya tonight. And she needed a few things, I said I would run up there. I think I've talked a couple times about this generator that I was going to talk about it, <laughs> so I thought I'd better get out here. I'm on my making my way out to the guest house, but when, with this one here, I took the carburetor off, you know, because it would run if I put the starting fluid in it. I think you guys saw that. Anyway, I took the carburetor out and cleaned that bowl and put it back together, and the same thing happened. So then I called Zach because inside of that carburetor, when you take off the bowl, and I don't know anything about this, my idea of fixing this is give it to Zachary or buy a new carburetor. But there was no time for either of that. So when I took the bowl out, like right in the center, there's a hole in there with a, it's like got a screwdriver slit on each side. Anyway, I called up Zach and asked if I needed to take that out. And he was like, yeah, that's what gets dirty. So I pulled that out and there's just a whole bunch of holes in it. He said, make sure they're all clean, which I did. Shot carburetor cleaner through it till it was shooting out all of them holes. And uh, then I put it back together and uh, the second pull it was, I think it started right up and runs like it's supposed to. So luckily I had Zach to call on that because I didn't have a clue. I did everything that I knew how to do.
I ordered stuff for the plumbing on here and finally the last of it showed up. So, I don't know, probably two hours ago I came out here, just before I was going to go to Walmart. I uh, come out here to start this furnace and two days ago when I was out here I shut that light off which I should wait and then I went in there and thought I flicked the switch to off and left. The furnace wasn't going like right now it shuts off when it gets to a certain temperature. Anyway it's been running for two days that's why the boiler's been burning so much wood. I was like man it's you know 10 below zero or whatever but it's really going through the wood. While I'm here it'll heat up and shut the thermostat off but there's no insulation underneath. It's just poly on top. The walls are insulated but that heat still dissipates so it has to come on quite a bit. So I've been heating this for two days and didn't even know it. Melissa said she was out last night and went in and she was in the uh, the mobile home there uh, and she said she thought she could hear it going but she thought well he must have just left it on and uh, yeah so that's why I was surprised because I really filled up the boiler last night and this morning when I went out there 12 hours later it was like it burnt it all and I did not expect that at all and that's why the only things I have left to do is to get the the tub thing in here, the spout thing set, the shower thing. Uh, do the drain pipe for the washer. And because the water will be inside, I don't really worry about that. You know, and then I'm going to one one vent that goes all the way through here for when I run the toilet underneath. I can I want that vented. We got the kitchen vented now. We got this vented. And the tub here, I don't know if I talked about it beforehand, but I went ahead and I got a, a shallow trap because I wanted a trap on here that doesn't drop down because it's going to be so cold underneath there. You know, I mean, it'll be insulated, but I just wanted to stay the least amount going down as possible. Well, then I ordered this, and then I was out here the other day thinking about this, and I was looking at the tub, and the way the tub drain works tub drain comes down, goes out, and then one goes up here and goes into the drain in case your tub gets too full, it doesn't overflow. And then that goes straight down, so putting this in as a P-trap would do absolutely nothing because any sewer gas can come up and just come through into the tub. So this was a waste of $27, I can send it back I guess, but Normally I don't, I put this in the plumbing bin and then I have stuff when I need it later, but yeah, so stupid of me, I wasn't even thinking. I was really hoping I would get this done tonight, but I ran out of clamps. I just ordered a hundred more clamps that was supposed to come with that order. And if I remember right, it did say something about how that was going to take a little while longer. But I don't have internet, so I haven't been checking that very much. I got my up one for the shower. The top one's clamped, but I haven't screwed that into place yet because I need to put a clamp on the bottom. Then I need to do my straight drop down and come in about four or five inches above the tub and have that one ready for the stub out for the spout. Run a couple water lines for the washer and dryer. And then I can go ahead and do my air test, check everything, and I'm going to be ready for sheetrock. I need 
made sure that I shut the furnace down today. You can really hear that wind whipping out there, and then it gusts. And they said that I mean, right now it's 7.22, and they said the wind isn't really going to pick up until after midnight. Well, it's a little bit after 10 o'clock. About 9 o'clock I went out there and filled that wood boiler and it was so cold. That wind is whipping. Beautiful morning in Minnesota. 16 below, the 40 some below wind chill. It's chilly. It is just plain cold out there with that wind. I was out here yesterday and this thing, the battery is almost dead. So I thought I'm gonna switch them out. Just checking to make sure that everything is above freezing in here and it is 41 back here. 50 over by the wood stove in the workshop part. It says 45 on the one that's on the wall above the furnace. I want to get out here maybe tomorrow or I don't know. I want to get it cleaned up in here. Now I'm going to run over and turn the heat on in the guest house so I can get some stuff done out there today. Last night I shut that down, loaded up the boiler, because remember before I had left that furnace run for two days, it's like I'm going to get a true representation of how much wood I need to burn when it gets this cold out. Because this is getting down to, you know, we'll get a couple of 30 below days, but you don't get too many. Anyway, so I go out there to load the boiler this morning and check it out, and I left the damper open all night long. <laughs> so a lot of heat just went through the stack. doesn't even tell the temp in here. It just says LL. Well, it's too cold for the fan to even start. It reminds me when I go up to the tent and uh, it's really cold for the winter trip and I get in there start the stove and then you plug in the fan and the fan just sits there doesn't want to move Everybody wants a white Christmas. Gotta watch what you wish for.
all the plumbing is done here for the tub. When I run the plumbing underneath the building now, I can hook the toilet line into this for a vent. Now I just have to figure out the washer stuff and I can insulate that wall. Next to me, and he said it's really blowing up there, and uh, the lights flickered a couple of times, but the power is still on. And my dad texted me because he wants to watch the news in Southwest Minnesota. All the roads are closed, and so I looked on the Minnesota 511, and the whole Southwest is all the little red circles with the white line, and just the whole part of the state. It must really be blowing up down there. They said in uh, Grand Marais, which is getting up close to, really close to Canada, going up the North Shore along Lake Superior, they had a wind gust up there at 70 miles an hour today. water lines outside of the wall like I'm going to come outside of the wall here and then shoot down and over to hook up to the whole system but with this first of all it's like right against the sheetrock and these two pipes are in here and they're both hot so even with this insulated there's no way that this section right here is going to freeze and I don't worry about the drain, so I just left it all in so everything is clean behind here. And then I'll just shoot it over from here once it's sheet rocked and just go straight against the wall and go across. I didn't want to go under because I want to be able to get a piece of trim down there to keep the whole linoleum down because this will just be vinyl in this room. So I wanted to keep it up some and then, you know, the whole mess is over here.
that's enough in here tonight. I did leave the heat on. I just turned it on down so it'll turn on at 38, I think, and shut off at 42. This will keep the furnace going so I don't have to go through the trouble of heating it up again and just kind of keep everything sort of warm. And not burn up all my wood because, you know, with no insulation on top or bottom, it leaves fast. I think I'll put my coveralls on, my boots on, all my heavy clothes on. Go out and get that, get underneath that tarp, dig out wood. I can't wait till there's a wood shed there because right now it's hard to get underneath that tarp and then break it loose. It wouldn't be bad, but there's this much snow on parts of it. So last night I was underneath there and I got into this pile because I've been taken from these two. And then when I pulled this wood out, you know, I get out of the way so it doesn't fall on me. And then a big chunk of that snow slid down the tarp and got behind me. So I had a heck of a time trying to push that up to get out and everything. So it's not bad when it's nice. Like next week, the end of next week, they're saying 35 degrees. But when it's cold like this, you just kind of want to get in, get it loaded, and get out. Melissa made a batch of jambalaya, but the pot can't be opened for 10 more minutes. Good morning, everybody. Just came out and did my plumbing air test. Everything seems good. Still blowing like crazy out there. Tomorrow it's finally supposed to start to calm down. You can see all the stuff that's blown off the trees. Actual air temperature right now is about 10 below, but the wind chill is 42 below. It's the day after Christmas. Yesterday the only thing I filmed was I showed that Melissa made seafood gumbo, garlic bread, potato salad. We had uh, pumpkin pie and lemon pie and lemon cake and cheesecake. It was a good meal. The wind has finally died down. It's uh, two degrees above zero right now. I thought I'd go out and push some of the snow out. It's almost lunchtime. But I can get a good half hour in here. Got to get these drifts out of the way.
Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Made it through the Christmas holiday. Two storms. Everything's cleaned up. Talkin's 30s later this week. I will see you guys on the next video.